somebody's hand while we pray our Father and our God we thank you for another day we praise thy rich <coughs> and holy name God you're worthy to be praised when we look at the sun the moon and the stars you are worthy to be praised we confess our sins and we ask you to please forgive us we're so thankful that you spared us to see another close of an annual conference. Thank you for waking us up this morning. And thank you for starting us on our way. Thank you for the food you put on our table and the clothing you put on our back. Thank you for life and health and strength and friends and family and food and clothing and shelter. But most of all, we thank you for Jesus. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Our Lord, we need you tonight. Our bodies are weary. Our spirits are tired. And we ask in the name of Jesus that you would energize us. Send your power. Send your Holy Ghost power. Fill us one more time. Touch our hearts and send your anointing. Break every yoke in this building today that will keep us from serving you in spirit and in truth. We claim that anointing and please let us preach. Not for fame or reputation, but the end that somebody would believe. And in believing, be saved. This we ask in Jesus' name. In the strong name of Jesus, we shout amen. amen. We shout praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I've had my ups and downs. Oh, I made it. Sometimes they knock me down. But oh, I made it. Sometimes my friend was few, and I sure didn't know what to do. Through it all, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, I made it. They said it couldn't be done, but look at Barack Obama. Oh, we made it. This old race got hard to run. But oh, we made it. There's no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do the same for you. Through it all, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, yes, we made. I've been sick as I can be. Anybody been sick this year? Oh, you made it. My loved ones got tired of me, but oh. We made I asked the Lord to give me some help. I didn't want to be in this world all by myself. Through it all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Yeah. Somebody tell them you can make it too. Say hallelujah. 
Say, thank you, Jesus. Say, glory to God. It's no secret what God can do. What he has done for others, he'll do just for you. Isn't it good to be alive? Look at somebody and tell them, I'm alive in Jesus. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm glad to be in the service one more time. For in him we live and move and have our being. Bishop Brookings and to all three of our presiding elders, to the pastors of this great conference, and I want all the preachers in the conference to stand. These are some wonderful men and women. <clears throat> Come on, layman, give your preachers, give your clergy. Some of the finest preachers in the world. Come on, give them another hand. Show them how much we appreciate them. And I want to express my thanks to all of you for making this a wonderful annual conference. You made it what it is. It could not have been what it is were it not for you. And I think one of the worst sins of the human heart is the sin of ingratitude. Somebody ought to learn how to say thank you. Somebody brings you a cup of water. You ought to say thank you. If somebody brings you a gift that you don't even want, you ought to take it and say thank you. And above all, you ought to thank the Lord. Because God is good, isn't he? And all the time, God is good. I heard Dr. Gardner Taylor talk once in a lecture about the burden and blessings of preaching. I didn't quite understand what he was talking about then. That's been years ago, but I understand it now. Preaching is a blessing, but it is also a burden. Because when you go through all the trials and tribulations of your office as a pastor, and particularly as a bishop, amen, it's a burden because you don't have a lot of time for preparation till 1.30 this morning. I was up dealing with notes under my hotel door <laughs> from people who want me to move that preacher. Some of them haven't put a dime in church. but they make demands on the bishop. And being up in phone calls and all that kind of thing tends to rob you sometimes of your meditation time. So I need your prayers. Here's what I want to talk about just briefly. Um, Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verse 7. I'm just going to read it to you. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Now, let me read it from the New Living Bible. It says, remember your leaders who first taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives. Trust the Lord as they do. Here's what I want to talk about. Thermometer or thermostat? <laughs> Look at somebody and tell them. That's a strange subject. <laughs> but that's all I could come up with. <laughs> Thermometer <laughs> or thermostat? And this evening, I, I want to indulge your minds for a few moments. Uh -huh. 
from that thought, uh, a thermometer yes, or a thermostat leader, All right. which one are you? And I want you to turn to the person sitting next to you and ask him, are you a thermometer or a thermostat? Now that you are getting ready to go back to your local church, and now that you have accepted leadership responsibilities, you must answer that question. What kind of leader am I? I am convinced that we are in a leadership crisis. We don't find it in many areas of our lives, not even in the church. And the question has to be answered, will I be a thermometer leader or will I be a thermostat leader? A thermometer leader has one use, to register the room temperature. But on the other hand, a thermostat leader, amen, is used to measure the temperature of a room, then change it and adjust it as needed. As contemporary American culture continues on its death spiral, yeah. thermostat leaders are desperately needed. Yeah. Leader 